Hey everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how you can automatically transcribe and summarize lectures using Python and then ask questions about them using LLMs. So here's the final application that we're going to make. And you can choose either a local file, a remote file, or a YouTube link. So we're using this lecture that you can find on YouTube. And we submit the file and it will be downloaded, transcribed, and then automatically summarized. You can expect this entire process to take less than a minute. So we see the results here, and we see the lecture broken down into sections with these bolded titles, and then a bulleted summary of what happens in each of those sections. And then below, we can interactively ask questions about the lecture. So any questions here will be answered by an LLM that has the entire lecture as context. So it's a little bit like retrieval augmented generation, except we're just passing in the entire relevant document. We see the placeholder question here, what is the point of using PyTest? So we'll go ahead and ask that. And we'll see a response here in just a few seconds. And here we see the response. The point of using PyTest is that it automates much of the testing boilerplate. So let's take a look at how to build this application now. And you can find all of the code for this tutorial in the repository linked in the description. And there's also a blog version if you want to follow along. So we're going to need three packages for this tutorial. You'll need to pip install assembly AI, pip install streamlit, and pip install YouTube DLP. So create a file called app.py, and we'll get started writing our application code. First, we'll do our imports. So we're going to need to import OS. We're going to need to import assembly AI as AAI, and we're going to need to import streamlit as ST. Streamlit allows us to use markdown in our applications using strings. So first, we'll create a section of our application to put in our assembly AI API key. Create a string and then a level two header that says API key. And then we'll add a note here to paste your assembly AI API key in the box below. Now we'll create a streamlit text input so that the user can input his or her API key. So we'll say input key is streamlit.text input. First, we'll create a label for this input, so API key. Now we add a key to our component, which is a string that helps us identify it within the context of the application. So here the key will be input AAI key. And now we need to create a callback function, which determines how the application handles this input changing. So we say on change is equal to set AAI key. And now we have to go create this callback function. So below the imports, add this function, set AAI key. And this isn't going to take in any parameters. And inside this function, we will set AAI.settings.api key. And we'll set it equal to the streamlit session state for that component. So every time we run the Streamlit application, we open a session, and the state for that session is stored in Streamlit.SessionState. So here we're extracting the state from this text input, and we identify that text input with its key, input AAI key, which is the attribute right here. So we extract the input from this text input, and we set it as the assembly AI key in the assembly AI Python SDK. So now we fully define the section of our application to input the API key, so we can move on to identifying the lecture. Again, create another markdown string, a level two header that's just called lecture. And again, we'll enter a description and we tell the user to enter the lecture he'd like to summarize below and then state that you can use a local file, remote file, or a YouTube video. Now it's time to create this selector and conditionally render the different types of inputs that we can use. So this component here where you can have one item selected is called a radio selector. So create a variable called F type. This will store the file type and that's going to be a streamlit radio. The label for this component will be file type, and then we pass in a tuple of the different options for this selector. So the user can either use a local file, a remote file, or a YouTube link. And now, depending on what the user selects, we're going to have to render different types of input methods. So for the remote file and the YouTube link, it's just gonna be a text input like it was for the API key. And for a local file, we're going to have to add this drag and drop selector so the user can browse files on his computer and upload them to the Streamlit application. And Streamlit makes it really easy to do this conditional formatting. It's just an if elif statement depending on the value of the radio selector. And you could also use a match case statement here, but we're gonna keep it simple with if elif. So we just have to include the three different possible values for the radio selector.
So the remote file and the YouTube link are very similar. We're just gonna use a text input like we did above. And the only differences between these two are going to be the default values and the placeholder values. So for the remote file, we'll use this and we give the input a label of link. We add the default value of this file in a storage bucket. And then we add this placeholder text when no value is entered that says public link to the file. So if we go here to the remote link and we delete this, we can see that the placeholder text will be public link to the file. And similarly for the YouTube link, we'll use this text input where everything is the same except the default value is the YouTube video, the unit test video that we saw earlier, and the placeholder text is YouTube link. And in each of these cases, we set the input equal to the F variable. And finally, if the user selects a file type, oh, this should be local file. If the user selects a local file, then we'll do this. So we'll use a file uploader component, which is this component we saw earlier. And if a file has been uploaded, so if F, then the uploaded file type is identified. A temporary file is created called temp.uploadedFileType. And then we write the bytes of this file to that temporary file. And finally, we just set the F variable equal to be this value. And now we add the context link. So here, this is the contextualizing information about the file. And we put that below as another text input. And we'll make the default value uh, an empty string if the user selects a local file and then just a description about Harvard CS50P course if the user chooses YouTube link or remote file because that's the default file in either case. And then we add in this variable for the placeholder text, which is contextualizing information about the file, and we denote that as optional. So now we have this section done, which specifies the type of file we want to use for this lecture, and we can upload our file. So we're going to conditionally render a submit button. So this submit button will only appear if a user has entered a file. So if we don't have a file, then we don't want to allow the user to submit anything. So back in our application, we'll write if f. So this is going to conditionally render this block if we have a file specified. And we'll add a streamlit button, uh, and it's going to be labeled submit. And we'll save this value in the entered variable. So this is a Boolean value. And when you hit that streamlit button, the value of entered will become true. So now we'll do another conditional rendering. And uh, if that button has been hit. So the first conditional rendering is to actually show this submit button. And then the second conditional rendering is to show the results once we hit that submit button. The first thing we're gonna to need to do when somebody submits a file is to transcribe that file. So go ahead and create a new file called utils.py. And we're gonna create a function called get transcript. So this transcript will take in both the file and the file type. And we'll need to import assembly AI as AAI. We'll need to import streamlit as ST once again. And from YouTube DLP, we'll need to import YouTube DL. So the first thing we need to do is instantiate a transcriber object. So that's gonna be an AAI.transcriber type. And we could technically instantiate this outside of this function, but just in case we have multiple users using this application simultaneously, this is just a little bit cleaner. And now we'll use this special context manager, which is a streamlit spinner. So we'll do with streamlit.spinner and we'll say transcribing file. So what this context manager does is it shows a spinning icon and displays this message while the block of code within it is executing. And in this case, we're just going to create our transcript, which uses the transcribers transcribe method, and we'll do that on the file. And then we can go ahead and return that transcript. In case this transcript errors out, we're going to want to create an exception. So we'll create the class transcription exception and that will just subclass uh, default exception and we'll pass. And now if there is a transcription error, we'll raise this custom exception. So we're almost done with this function. The last thing we need to do is download the YouTube video in the case that it's a YouTube link. This transcriber.transcribe method requires either a path to a local file or a URL of a publicly accessible remote file. So in the case that we get a YouTube link, we're gonna to need to first download that video to our file system. So if the file type is YouTube video, then we're going to use that Streamlit Spinner Context Manager again. And we'll add a download option as a dictionary. 
and we're going to specify the output name uh, and we'll add a constant here, YouTube DLP file name. And at the top of the file here, we'll just add this constant. So we'll save the video to this temp.webm file. And then with our YouTube downloader, uh, passing in the YouTube options as YDL, we will download the file associated with the link that was passed in through F. And then finally, we will change the value of F to YouTube DLP file name so that this transcriber.transcribe method uses the downloaded temporary file rather than the link that was passed in. And now we are good to go. So we can go back to our main application code and at the top of our file from our utils, we can import get transcript. And then back down where we left off before, uh, if somebody hits the submit button, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and get that transcript. So again, here we're passing in the file and the file type. And after we get the transcript, we can remove the file from the Streamlit application. So if the file type is local file, then we can OS remove the file. And if the file type is a YouTube link, we can go ahead and remove the YouTube DLP temporary file, which goes by YouTube DLP F name. So we have to go back and import that constant from our utils. And uh, importing the name directly like this actually doesn't work for some reason. So go back into your utils file and just add this simple function that returns this constant and then import that instead and set this constant equal to the result of that function. And now that we have our transcript, we can go ahead and add our transcript to the session state. So we'll do streamlet session state and then set the state's transcript equal to the transcript that we just received from Assembly AI. So now the lecture has been submitted, we've transcribed it with Assembly AI, and we can work on summarizing the sections of this lecture in these bulleted lists. For this, we'll be using Assembly AI's Lemur framework, and this is a framework for applying LLMs to speech data. It makes it really easy to operate on our transcript with an LLM. So back in our main application, we can uh, go ahead and, and again use this Streamlit Spinner context manager and we'll display the message generating summary while this code executes. And to get a summary of the lecture, all we have to do is write summary equals transcript.lemur dot summarize and that will summarize our lecture. So this will work just fine, but in our case, we're gonna wanna summarize each section of this lecture uh, as a different heading and we're gonna to wanna to have a bulleted list for each of those sections individually. So now we're gonna input some parameters to the summarize method so that Lemur knows what output we want. And in particular, we'll add this params dictionary, which contains an answer format where we specify the format that we want Lemur to output. So in this case, we use markdown syntax and say we want uh, each part of the lesson bolded, and then we want a list of important points from that part of the lecture. And then we say that the max output size for Lemur is 4,000 tokens. So we can now go ahead and pass these params into the summarize method, and we'll save the summary that we receive back in the session state under summary, and we'll set that summary equal to be the summary's response, and we'll strip off any extraneous white space, as well as split the result uh, along new line characters, which will make our lives easier down the road. And then next, we're going to add another session state, and we're just gonna set entered equal to true, and that will help us with conditional rendering later on. And finally, we're just going to wrap this entire block of code in a try except block, just in case this request fails for some reason. And so uh, we'll try to execute this code, but if there is a lemur error, then we'll write this lemur error out and then turn this session state of entered to false. So we're not gonna do the conditional rendering that follows if this request failed. So if we successfully got our summary, or in other words, if session state uh, entered is true, then we will add a heading for the results. And if there is a summary, which there should be, for each item in the uh, summary, we will render it as markdown. So here we're just using the streamlit markdown uh, component. And you could also use the walrus operator here if uh, you want. And now we can go add this section for the questions. 
So once again, we'll do a conditional rendering. If there is a summary, then we will again add a level two header for questions and we'll add the description, ask a question about the lesson below. And again, we will use a text input for this. So the label will be question and the placeholder will be what is the point of using PyTest. And then similarly to before, if somebody has input a question, we will render this streamlit button. And once that button is pressed, we will again use this context manager spinner while the code executes. And the code that's executing is going to be this ask question function, which will take in the transcript object, not the textual transcript and then it will also take in the question. And then once this is done, it will just display the answer. And we're going to display this answer outside of this if block so that uh, we can still see the answer if we submit a new question. So the last thing we need to do is go back and actually define this ask question function. So we need to define what this application should do when somebody hits the submit button after typing in a question. So go back into your utils file and create an uh, ask question function that takes in a transcript and the question. So we'll create this variable called result and we'll again use transcript.lemur, but this time we'll use the question endpoint. So remember, this is an assembly AI transcript object. So it has this lemur attribute and then we can call the question endpoint and we'll pass in our questions. So this function doesn't take in a raw string like we're passing in and it actually takes in a list of another type called lemur question. So here we'll define questions equals this list and we create aai.lemur question and we just pass in the question as our question. And this result will be a list where the ith element of this list answers the ith element of this questions list. So what we want to return is the response to the only question we have in this list. And then we extract the answer attribute of that response which actually contains the textual uh, answer to that question. And then finally, as above, just in case there's an error here, we're going to create another exception like this one. So this time we're gonna create this custom exception, uh, question exception. And if there is an error with this transcript, we will raise this question exception. And we're gonna to need to go back and import that at the top of the file. So go back to the top and from utils import uh, ask question. And now we're ready to run the application. So you can go to your terminal and you can type in streamlit run app.py. And what you'll see is an error, which says that uh, session state has no key entered. Did you forget to initialize it? So our application is running, but we just haven't set the initial values that we need to. So go back to your application code and at the top, right before the main streamlit application, which starts here, we are going to define our constants. So first, we're going to set our defaults for conditional rendering. Um, so we set all of these to none so that we're not rendering the things that we don't want to render until the user interacts with our application as expected. And then we also need to initialize our state variables. Um, so remember in our state, we save the summary uh, entered and this transcript. And so we just need to go through and if uh, each of these values is not in the session state, then we're going to set it to none. And the reason we save these values as session state is because every time we interact with the application, it's going to rerun our application code from the top and it's going to overwrite those values. So the state just defines the values that we want to maintain uh, while we interact with the application, which in our case is this summary, this entered Boolean and the transcript object. And then also to make our code a little bit more robust, uh, just in case we have an improper shutdown, we're going to remove any temporary files that didn't get properly deleted when the application shut down. So now we're good to go and you can go ahead and rerun the Streamlit application. And there we have it. So we can see our application is working fine. Uh, you can paste in your API key, uh, you can specify a lecture and the conditional rendering works as expected. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below, or you can watch our recent video on extracting phone call insights using LLMs. I'll see you in the next video. Good afternoon, Elkins Builders. Yeah, hi, I'm calling to speak to someone about building a house and a property I'm looking to purchase. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to see how you can automatically extract phone call insights using LLMs and Python.